Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to talk about observer design pattern. In this series of design patterns, the pattern that we discussed last week was factory design pattern. In that video, I talked about what is the difference between architecture and design patterns, why should we use design patterns and what are the different types of design patterns like creational, structural and behavioral. In this video, we are not going to talk about all that, but in case you missed it, here's the link. Today we will discuss observer design pattern in detail. We'll see that what is observer design pattern, what are its components, what is its basic structure, where can we use it, some real life examples, and then its implementation in Swift. The example that I will take for showing its implementation is a very common use case for every mobile developer. And trust me, by the end of this video, you will have a strong grip on observer design pattern and you will get it in a way that you will never forget it. So let's start. So before we jump onto observer pattern, I want you to know that this is the one pattern which is in the roots of iOS app development. Be it ages old KVO concept or notification center that you use in almost all of your apps or the latest combined framework, they are all based on observer pattern. So this was just to make your interest and now let's see that what is observer pattern. So observer pattern is one of the behavioral patterns. Now behavioral patterns are concerned about the interaction between the objects, the interaction between the entities that how will they communicate. So you can treat it like this. That if creation is about instantiation of the objects, structural is about the blueprints, then behavioral is about the communication, the interaction between the objects. It focuses on assignment of the responsibility to the objects. So observer is one of the behavioral patterns, that is fine. The next thing that it says is that it defines a one-to-many relationship between the objects. So when one object changes its states, the other dependent objects are notified. And I completely understand that these definitions won't make it 100% clear, but when we will see examples and we will implement it, it will be crystal clear to you. But for now, you can understand that when one object will change its states, its other dependent objects will be notified. And this will be possible because a one-to-many relationship has been set up. The next thing that I would like to discuss here is PubSub pattern. So it would be appearing like more of a publisher subscriber pattern. Those who know PubSub pattern, they can relate. But for those who don't, PubSub pattern is basically a publisher and subscriber pattern where we have one publisher and many subscribers to it. So whenever there is a change in publisher's state, subscribers are notified about it. And there are hundreds of examples for this like radio, newspaper. If you want to learn about it in detail, here's the link of one of my videos that I did on Combine. And in this video, I have explained about publisher subscriber pattern and how Combine uses it. So you can have a look at it. Now let's look at an example. And this is for explaining the problem that why do we need observer pattern? What was the problem that was solved by observer pattern? Assume that there is an Apple store in a town and people go there to buy iPhones, iPads and a ton of things that Apple sells. Now someone from this house wants an iPhone 11. He goes to the store, inquires about it and he comes to know that iPhone 11 is not available as of now. So he comes back. Next day, he again goes to the Apple store and the same story. iPhone 11 is still not available and he returns empty handed. Now this can continue for a long time till the time iPhone 11 is actually available at the store. So there should be a solution for this. Now one of the solutions can be that a store sends a mail to all its customers on availability of any product. So what this will result into? The customers who don't want that product will get angry, will get furious because a store is spamming their mailbox. And the only person who will be happy will be the one who wanted that product. So this is obviously not a good approach. What can improve here is that customers receive message only for that particular product which they want. So basically they are subscribing to a particular event. When that particular event will happen, they will get a message, they will be notified about it. This is what observer pattern is. This is publisher subscriber model. And I didn't make up this example. I read it long back when I was studying about observer pattern and I thought that I should share it with you guys. And you can relate it with a ton of real life examples around you. For example, newspaper. You subscribe to a newspaper and you get it daily. The moment you think that you don't want that particular newspaper, you say no to the delivery guy and he stops delivering it. If you want two newspapers, four newspapers or maybe some magazines for that matter, you subscribe to them and you start getting them. The moment you don't want, you say no to it. That is what observer pattern is. You can relate it with radio. You tune into a particular frequency and you start getting the information. You change the frequency or you turn off the radio, it stops. As simple as that. So now that we have some idea of observer pattern, let's look at its structure, some basic components. The first component is publisher. Some people call it subject. It has three important things. The first one is this array of observers. This array is used to store the reference of the observers to whom this particular publisher is supposed to notify. The second thing is these three methods. 
एड ऑब्जर्वर रिमूव ऑब्जर्वर एंड नोटिफाई ऑब्जर्वर सो वेन एन ऑब्जर्वर वॉन्ट टू लिसन टू द इवेंट्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर पब्लिशर इट विल एड हिमसेल्फ यूजिंग द मैथड एड ऑब्जर्वर एंड इट्स रेफरेंस विल बी स्टोर्ड इन द ऑब्जर्वर्स एरे वेन दैट ऑब्जर्वर वॉन्ट्स टू स्टॉप लिसनिंग टू द इवेंट इट विल यूज रिमूव ऑब्जर्वर मैथड एंड इट विल रिमूव इट्स रेफरेंस फ्रॉम द ऑब्जर्वर्स एरे द नेक्स्ट मैथड इज नोटिफाई ऑब्जर्वर्स दिस विल बी यूज बाई पब्लिशर सो वेन द डिजायर्ड इवेंट विल टेक प्लेस दिस मैथड विल बी यूज टू नोटिफाई द ऑब्जर्वर्स अबाउट दैट एंड द थर्ड पार्ट इज बिजनेस लॉजिक सो दिस विल बी दैट पार्ट ऑफ कोड दिस विल बी दैट लॉजिक डिपेंडिंग ऑन विच द इवेंट विल बी ट्रिगर्ड नाउ द सेकेंड कंपोनेंट इज ऑब्जर्वर सो ऑब्जर्वर इज एनी एंटिटी विच इज इंटरेस्टेड इन द इवेंट ऑफ दैट पब्लिशर नाउ ऑब्जर्वर शुड हैव अ मैथड दैट इज अपडेट और मे बी द नेम कैन चेंज बट इट शुड हैव सम मैथड विच विल बी कॉल्ड बाई पब्लिशर वेन द इवेंट विल टेक प्लेस एंड बिकॉज दिस पब्लिशर हैज एन एरे ऑफ ऑब्जर्वर्स देर कैन बी मल्टीपल ऑब्जर्वर्स नाउ दीज ऑब्जर्वर्स विल यूज द एड ऑब्जर्वर मैथड टू सब्सक्राइब टू दैट पर्टिकुलर पब्लिशर and then when event will take place the publisher will call the notify observer method to call the update method of the observers but how will publisher come to know that these observers are having some method called update so this is something that should be imposed and here comes a third entity that is a protocol so we'll have an interface a protocol which will be confirmed by all the observers so that the publisher has a guarantee that the observers are having a method called update or whatever the method that has been mentioned in the protocol and some people say that there can be a fourth component which would be a protocol for the publisher well there can be if you want to have multiple publishers who should follow the same structure there can be definitely a protocol for publishers too but i feel that this is the minimum requirement for the observer pattern there should be a protocol for observers its concrete implementation in the form of observers and then there should be a publisher these three entities can complete the observer pattern now let's see that where can you use it so whenever multiple entities are interested in the change of a state of a particular object you can think of observer pattern let's take an example for its implementation and that example would be observing the download state so assume that you are working on an application like amazon prime music or maybe spotify jio seven or hangama music and all of these have the download feature now when the download will start you are supposed to show the download progress you are supposed to show the pause button you are supposed to show the download cancel button and you need to show these at different places so one of the places can be listing screen where all the songs are listed and you have a download switch like this which will download all the songs and then you need to show the progress for each of them another place can be my download section where you will see that what all songs you have downloaded what is in the queue what is being downloaded etc etc and then product team can always come up with some weird requirements that they want to show the download progress on home screen on some specific widget or anywhere in the app so basically you should be able to implement the download functionality in such a way that you can listen to the download callbacks anywhere you want now this is a perfect example for observer pattern let's implement it the first thing that we need is a class say download manager here you will implement the url session and the actual downloading will take place in this class and from here the callbacks will be given to the other listeners the other observers or subscribers or whatever you can call them so let's start with that let's say a class say download manager now this is our subject it will be having the implementation for url session and then it will be giving the callbacks to the other observers so for those observers let's make an array say where observers and what should be the type of these observers so for now let's keep it as any i am initializing it with an empty array okay so we have an array of observers and the next thing that we discussed was a method to add the observers so let's add a method here func add observer and we'll receive an observer of type any because we are having the array of type any so let's say observer of type any and this will be appended in this array of observers so say append observer the next method that we want is remove observer so when the observers want to remove them say remove observer say this will also receive an observer that will be of type any and then the, there will be the logic for logic for removing observer and the third method should be for notifying the observers so say for notify observers and here in this method we will iterate over the array so say for observer in observers and observer dot 
Now we need to call some method of observer, but we don't know that what method it is having because it is of type any. So that's what we discussed that the observers should be the concrete implementation for a protocol. They should confirm to a protocol. So let's create one. Let's create a protocol, say protocol observable. And for now, I'm just writing a method in that say func update maybe. Now this observable protocol will be confirmed by all of our observers. So I can say that instead of having the array of any, I can have an array of observables. And here also I'll receive the observer, which will be of type observable, observable. And now because my observer is of type observable, I know that it will be having a method called update. So through this, I can notify my observers. And how will my observer look like? So let's say I have a class, say my downloads maybe, and it confirms to the protocol observable. Now, because it is confirming to the protocol observable, I'll need to overwrite the method update. So if I go for it, func update. And for adding this my downloads as an observer, I should be calling the add observer method. But before that, let me change the download manager to a singleton so static let say shared and this will be of type download manager and let's initialize it say download manager now here in the init of this class what i can do is i can add it as observers so say download manager dot share dot add observer and my bad this should be declared as private and then I can pass self because this class of mine is confirming to the protocol observer so I can pass self here and then this will be added to this array of observers. So this is the very basic implementation of the observer pattern but what you can do is that you can even enhance it according to the use case for which you are applying the observer pattern or as per your logic. So for example here we are having the download functionality the download manager class. So just for showing that how you can extend the power of observer pattern, I am confirming here to the protocol URL session download delegate maybe because this class is for download manager. Obviously it will be having these methods and then I'll have this method say did complete with error. Obviously I'll be having other delegate methods too, but just for an example. And this method will tell you that there has been some error in your download. So what you can do is that you can notify all your observers that there was an interruption, there was an error in the download. And for that, you can have another method here in your protocol observable. And you can say it's a func did receive error maybe. And then you can have some parameters too. So you can have an error object here. And then your observables will have to confirm to that method so that will be func did receive error and then they will handle the error accordingly but from here what you can do is you can say notify observers and in the notify observers you can pass some flag to tell that what type of delegate method or what type of the update method is to be called so for that if i create an enum here let's say enum and I'll call it download state maybe and taking just two cases say download complete and download error for now. Now what I can do is that this notify observer will receive a state that will be of type download state and inside this loop I can have a switch statement for state and the case will be one for the download complete and the other one will be for download error and depending on this I can call the respective methods so here I can call did receive my bad observer dot did receive error and then you can pass the error that is received from download delegate or you can pass a custom error well that depends on your use case and here in the notify observer i can simply pass download error so to tell that the error related method is to be triggered in the observers 
or when the download complete i can do the same for download complete so what i want to tell here is that you can extend this functionality you can extend this behavior and it is very powerful when you want to inform the observers when you want to tell something to your subscribers that that particular event has taken place or will be taking place you can even pass the progress from here and you can do a hell lot of things but the concept remains same that there's a subject that there's a publisher or subject and there are subscribers or listeners or observers and then the publisher is sending the events to them and they are listening to those events through some particular method now there can be some complexities for example memory leaks so the observers that you are saving here in an array these are the strong references but the observers or the listeners they should be generally weak so how can we fix that and for that we can create a class for having the weak references and then whenever the observer is received we can parse it to that particular weak reference and then store it in the area of weak references all sort of things can be done but the crux is that how you can use the observer pattern for these kind of things when multiple entities are interested in the change of a state of an object that's the whole point of observer pattern so i hope that you would have got it and if there are some doubts please leave them in the comments i will try to answer as much as possible that's pretty much for this video a new video comes out every sunday so you might consider subscribing to the channel let's write better code together happy coding and stay safe